the money. If you want to trace all of this that I've been talking about, uh -huh. <clears throat> you want to trace back all the wars and bloodshed and all the corruption going on around the world, People talk about the Jewish conspiracy, mm -hmm. the Jews, this, and the mm -hmm. Jews. No, no. It's not. I don't know. I know. It's like it. everything else. It's just a front. Right. You want to go back to the people who are really doing this stuff all around the world to us? Yeah. The Vatican. But you can bet on it. Really? That's why Hollywood is making movies like in, uh, like uh, this, this last thing. What was it with... Uh, Angels and demons and Da Vinci Code, and they're talking about the Vatican and all the occult stuff. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Rome has been ruling Europe for almost 2,300 years. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the Vatican has been ruling Europe for at least 1,600 years. Uh -huh. All of the royalty and celebrities and royalty of, of Europe are royalty. They rule by divine right, mm. right? Well, where do you get the divine right from? You get it from the Holy Father. Mm. God didn't give you any divine right. Nobody's talked to God lately. Mm. You don't need to talk to God. The Vatican will decide if you are one of their boys. And if you're one of their boys, the Pope will then, uh, you know, bless mm. you. With the, like they did Michael Corleone and the, and the <laughs> Godfather Three, and with the sword and all that kind of thing. And now you are divinely appointed. By who? By the Pope. <clears throat> the people at the Vatican, and the Vatican represents a very powerful secret society that's been in operation in the Roman Empire long before the Vatican ever existed. It's mm -hmm. referred to as a Sun Order, S-U-N, the Sun Order. Going back to Egypt. Though, it's right? going back to Egypt, absolutely. Right, right. And so the Sun was always represented as an eagle. The eagle always represented the Sun. The hor Horus, the eagle. Exactly, yeah, yeah. The, the hawk or the, or the eagle. Yeah, yeah. Now, eagles only have two wings, left wing and right wing, so that's why you <laughs> always have that's why you always have a division between the left wing and right wing in right. politics and religion mm -hmm. because you need two feet yeah. you need to walk through this world on two feet yeah so that's uh, just the beginning yeah. we could talk about all this later thank thank you Jordan I really appreciate talking right. to Jordan Maxwell a uh, brilliant piece of information thank you for watching Jordan Maxwell.com Alan Steinfeld for new realities thank you and see you next time A state claim letter notice of beneficiaries July 11, 2016 His Holiness Francis 00120 Vatican City State, Europe Most Beloved Francis, we write to you today regarding settlement of all debts owed to the true God, to the actual Universal Church, to us, our family, our countrymen and to all people of this world. It has been three years since you issued your motu proprio. It is written that when what is true comes, what is false must pass away. It is also written that Satan is the father of all lies so that there can be no doubt where lies come from and the ultimate fate of those falsehoods. It is also written that Yeshua will come again and at the same time, he promises that he is with us always. The meaning of this is now clear. He never left. He lives in us. He is here and now it is time for the kingdom of lies and the rulership of Satan to end. We are among those appointed to destroy by our lineage foretold and written on the altar of the church inviolable. Now we must draw your attention to some facts plainly stated in the Bible. 1. Peter, that is, faith in forgiveness, is the cornerstone of the church Yeshua founded, yet Peter is the precisely the stone rejected by the builders of the church that arose from the Council of Nicaea. Peter was never the bishop of Rome. 2. Paul was the apostle to the Romans and founder of the Roman church. Thus, Paul, not Peter, is the founder of all that you cherish and the bishop of Rome that you follow, but you cannot have it both ways. No man can have two masters. This is the central problem and dilemma of the church, the lie at the foundation that must be addressed. To correct this you must take Peter, faith in forgiveness, into your heart. 3. Judas betrayed Yeshua in one way and Peter betrayed him in another. Both men were guilty, and of the two, Peter most of all, for Judas only offered up the body, but Peter's sin struck at heart and mind as well. How is it then that Judas despaired, went out and hanged himself, yet Peter who bore the more heinous sin wept and rose up to glory? Peter who loved Yeshua had faith in him, he knew that the love and wisdom of Yeshua would not fail. Peter knew he could be and would be forgiven even the greatest of sins. Thus he was able to rise up and do great things despite the enormity of his own sin. 
4. We encourage you to take Peter's lesson into your heart today as you face the enormity of the church's betrayal, not just of the body of our Lord, but of his mind and spirit as well. Let Peter be your cornerstone at last. Let faith and forgiveness guide you to choose life and glory for the church, instead of despair and an ignoble end. 5. You must lay aside all claim that authority passed from Peter to the Vicar of Rome. The Vicar of Rome is the Vicar of Rome. All pretense otherwise must be set aside, for that is the basis upon which so many other lies and sins recline. 6. We must also admit that Pope Innocent III was possessed by the spirit of falsehood and ego. His works and his ways must come to an end both within and outside the Church. He dishonored the peace of God and instead of loving our Father set himself up to reign as a false god and false steward and he taught his successors to deal likewise in iniquity, cruelty and blasphemy. 7. The Church has become wealthy and unimaginably powerful and has not only fornicated with the kings of the earth, but given birth to them, and they have committed many atrocities in the name of God, heaping blasphemy upon blasphemy. The Church so adulterated and those monarchs thus promoted have usurped and misled mankind into gross suffering, unnecessary peril and divine reckoning. 8. We won't enumerate even a very short list of the past sins of the Roman Church, but we assure you that they are all these things are fully known in great detail and will not be forgiven if they are not confessed and repented. 9. The kingdom of lies which has thus been founded amounts to a principality of the dead, a realm of incorporated legal fictions and personas, and what are these but more lies? It is therefore clear that the Church of Rome has colluded in this with the father of all lies and has grown rich and powerful because of it. 10. Even as the Church of Rome's wealth and power has grown and the reach of its administration extended into every aspect of our lives, its spirit and connection to the Lord of life has declined, until now it stands on death's doorway. 11. This kingdom of lies has been administered through a system of interlocking trust directorates all tied directly or indirectly to your office. Let us examine the actual meaning of trust applied by your trustees, ancient Latin, trucido, to kill cruelly, massacre, slaughter, butcher, slay. 12. Thus, through their offices, these trustees have slain the innocent by identity theft and fraud and sought to mischaracterize and misrepresent the victims who are actually heirs of the kingdom as things, legal fictions arbitrarily defined as debtors and as slaves. 13. The mechanism of this genocide on paper is simple enough. The instigators introduced and used a corrupted form of Latin known as Dog Latin to name living people in agreements transferring property and other documents written in English, German, and other descriptive languages. The innocent saw what appeared to be their name in the context of the surrounding English text and did not recognize it for what it was, sign language used to mischaracterize them as things, corporations not people. 14. Combining two dissimilar languages in one document, one of those languages being corrupt and not identified as a separate language at all, renders all contracts, all legal documents that have employed dog Latin as part of an English, German, or other text, invalid, null and void ab initio. No such combined jurisdiction can exist. 15. Let us provide an example so that everyone can be educated in this matter. In ancient Latin a name would be written, Anna Maria Riezinger. In dog Latin it would be written, Anna Maria Riezinger without hyphens connecting the words. This construction creates a full stop between each word, so that it is rendered, Anna Maria Riezinger. This is clearly nonsense and not a name at all, but a disconnected and unrelated series of names. It is gibberish. 16. Thus we fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 27 and 28 and break all contracts with the dead incorporated persons created by this fraudulent conveyance and all the associated infamous practices that have served to defraud and enslave the living people are likewise overthrown. 17. While pretending to be the shepherds of God, it is apparent that the church administrative hierarchy has instead been intent upon the raping and pillaging of God's lambs and has placed false claims against their bodies and souls. 18. An examination of the various constitutional documents creating all the secular governments in the world shows that with the exception of the original Constitution for the United States of America which is written entirely in English, every similar agreement is tainted with dog Latin and is invalidated by its use. 
The only country on earth having a valid agreement with Rome is ours, and every attempt has been made to misrepresent and mischaracterize and usurp this one, too. 19. The motive for all this wrongdoing is rooted in the promotion of an ancient and venal pagan religion based on idolatry and requiring the worship of the graven images known as money. One of your offices, that of Pontiff, is especially charged within this religion to serve as the bridge between the living who have been forced to depend upon this evil system as a means of exchange and trade, and the dead corporations operating as banks and governmental services corporations that feed upon it. In other words, the office of Pontiff is singularly responsible for banking and what goes on in the world because of it. 20. The arbitrary nature of the fiat currencies which use engraved images on pieces of paper is now all too clear and so a retreat to gold and silver idols has commenced. It cannot be long before everyone notices that this, too, is arbitrary and fraudulent. Gold and silver don't really represent beans and rice. It is an illusion similar to representative government. Please note, Francis, that gold is not actually transformed by magic into soybeans, self-governance is not the same as governance by proxy, and except in the wishful thinking of the Satanists among us, communion wine is not the same as blood. 21. To the extent that we must have some means to trade goods and labor the world is again forced to use gold and silver for a time as a form of lesser evil, but we clearly see that the world banking system is another institutionalized fraud scheme wagered against the overall good of mankind, a system designed to defraud, enslave, and steal from vast numbers of people for the benefit of a tiny elite that has glutted itself on the blood and labor of the innocent, just as in the days of Pharaoh. 22. All home mortgages issued in the United States are based on constructive fraud. The fraud begins when the banks advertise home loans. People assume that this is a solicitation for the banks to loan them money to buy homes, but in fact, it is a solicitation to have people loan their homes as collateral for the banks. The banks misrepresent security notes subject to Article 9 of the UCC as promissory notes subject to Article 3. They never transfer title to any REMIC organization. They never pay any transfer taxes. They are operating in open fraud to the detriment of over 6 million American families each year. 23. The Roman pontiff has allowed this legal chicanery, false advertising, and the false claims against the assets of the living people that result. So let's be blunt the Vatican owns the UCC and is responsible for its misuse. The Curia is responsible for the existence of all these corporations. By maxim of law, we are responsible for what we create, and the Holy See has spawned all this, idolatry, lawlessness, fraud and swindling on a scale not seen since Babylon. It's well and truly beyond the rational time to repent and take meaningful action against the lawyers and the banks, not merely a slap on the hands and not just a hand-washing attempt to avoid culpability. You are under demand to put a stop to it. 24. The former popes, the British Crown, and the French Rothschilds have all conspired to make this entire world into a slave market where people and their assets are bought and sold like cattle. In America, people are bonded without any knowing consent before they are out of the cradle, and these bonds representing assets that belong uniquely and only to them are offered for sale to investors who participate in this unlawful and unholy trade without even recognizing it for what it is. The profits are siphoned off by the Roman Church and the British Crown and the French Central Bank owned by Rothschild. 25. The slave bonds known as Cusip bonds are created and then traded through the Bank of New York and the DTC, DTTC. The profit is funneled to seeds and then to the Vatican Bank where this blood money is laundered and sent back to the Bank of Canada where the Queen and the Crown take their cut, before sending on the rest back to the Bank of New York which funds all levels of the federal government including the Federated States and the Federated Counties. Let's make it perfectly clear that none of these activities have anything whatsoever to do with us. None of these states of states or counties of counties are ours. Our assets are not being wagered and these things, these legal persons, that have been created in our names written in dog Latin are merely more lies being told to us and about us. And once again, it is time for this to stop. We are assets of the land, not the sea. Our nativity must be recorded, not registered. We are people, not persons. 26. 
As noted, the only constitution that is grammatically and jurisdictionally correct is the American Constitution written over 200 years ago and that communication is still binding upon Rome and England, as are all the treaties which led up to it plus the Treaty of Ghent issued in 1814. None of the other countries have a constitution that is enforceable, so it is up to us to clean up this filthy mess and hold Rome and the British monarch to account for it. The gross misadministration and criminal trespasses that we and the other nations have suffered must come to an end without further obfuscation or delay. 27. As affirmed by the Alaska State Superior Court operated under Article 10 of the only actual constitution by birthright Americans, there are still 50 states upon the land operated by living people who are proven heirs and beneficiaries and they have come forward to claim their estates in their own behalf and that of all the other American people, too. 28. Gulling as it may be to generations of church leaders and European monarchs who have deeply compromised their honor and betrayed our trust, the agreement stands and you are on the receiving end of it. The good faith agreements made by the Americans have been honored by the Americans. It is now upon your honor and the honor of the British monarch to repent and reflect on the many debts that are owed to the Americans, Canadians, Australians and others. 29. Our government is not in any interregnum as a result of our international laundry service changing hands. We are still here, operating our actual and organic states as we always have. 30. Our government does not need any postlaminium rights, as our government has not been overcome in war or any other struggle. We have merely been set upon by criminals and pirates that have been allowed to prey upon us by unfaithful, incompetent, dishonest and fully culpable trustees, both popes and monarchs. The world can read our standing agreement with Rome and with the British monarch and see what it shall see. If you dishonor your agreement with the American states, you dishonor it in front of the entire world. If you attack the Americans or meddle in our affairs or do anything but clean up your joint operations on our soil and give us good faith service from now on, it will be clearly seen by the entire world who is responsible for the chaos and violence and who has done or failed to do what is right in the sight of the one true God. 31. In 1822 while under full international treaty and concord, while acting as our trustees in the jurisdiction of the air and the jurisdiction of the sea respectively, and enjoying all the powers and benefits thereof, the then Pope and the British monarch signed the Treaty of Verona and agreed to undermine our lawful government which is of the people, by the people, and for the people, not of the person, by the person, or for the person, and set upon the current course of infamy. 32. The American treaties require that all of us who are living people claiming our birthright as American state nationals are recognized to be sovereigns equal to the King of England or France when standing upon our land, and we are further guaranteed safe passage and protection and friendship in perpetuity when we or our vessels in trade or commerce traverse the international jurisdiction of the sea. This, summed up from the treaty obligations of Rome and England, is what we are owed and what we have always been owed and which we claim. 33. We declare that no noble ends are served by evil means and no excuse exists for the history leading to this circumstance. Murdering, raping, pillaging, evicting, cheating, slandering, mischaracterizing, thieving, enslaving and press-ganging for Christ is not a tenable position to be in, no matter what extenuating circumstance may be offered for it. 34. Those Satanists who have operated within the Roman Church and excused their activities and presence as a necessary duty to teach the difference between good and evil have served no such purpose at all, we are all perfectly able to tell the difference between good and evil and also have the ability to recognize evil disguised as good. This is self-evident from the presentment before you. 35. We declare that the law of Noah was overcome by Moses who parted the Red Sea and the law of Moses was overcome by Yeshua who parted the veil between life and death and the law of Yeshua stands. It is past time to stop living in the past which like all lies and incorporations is dead. We are all the inheritors of one precious living moment and it is called now. Let us take action now against these evils because there is no other time or place. 36. The perversion of our perception of time and cutting of the day into hours is yet another swindle and attack against our wholeness, our good, and our minds. We are taught to think in terms of past, present, and future but not to recognize the essential and important point, time does not really exist. It is just a perceptual construct based upon our senses and experiences. What we perceive as past is, from a different perspective, very much alive. 
What we perceived as the future and not yet born is, from a different perspective, already dead and gone. The only true time is now, the present moment, in which our consciousness dwells. 37. All representations of time, therefore, that are not the present and eternal now, are in essence lies and labels attached to fictitious clockworks arbitrarily established and arbitrarily applied. There is no special truth or honor or accuracy attributable to any of these systems used to catalog events and whatever ownership interest there may be in creating and making practical use of these systems is only a liability, because once again, we are dealing with fictions, lies. It must be recognized that all agreements are in fact concluded now and are in affect now and only exist now. Any description of time discussed as 1822, 1868, etc., is to be understood in terms of this truth and only as a convention familiar to you to promote your understanding of events. 38. In 1868, the Roman Catholic Church and its British affiliates took advantage of the chaos created by the Civil War, and began a campaign of fraud and deception by incorporating the United States of America and pawning this privately owned corporation off as the restored lawful government. It was in fact just a deceptively named governmental services corporation operated by the Holy See and what would later become the Vatican Bank. No peace treaty ending the Civil War was ever signed, which the Holy See and Britain have used as an excuse to abuse Americans and keep the United States at war in international venues ever since. Both the Holy See and Britain's monarchy have both promoted war for profit at American expense and in betrayal of our trust to the detriment of the whole world for over a 150 years. This great sin, great fraud, and great betrayal of trust now stands before all nations. Let it be firmly understood that America was the victim and that the corporations that have done this have preyed upon us as they have preyed upon the entire world. 39. Following the Second World War the same players did the same thing, and spawned a new governmental services corporation doing business as the United States, Inc., only this time they opened up the game to the French Rothschilds, too. The then Pope, FDR, and the Crown agents had bankrupted the United States of America, Incorporated, in 1933 and promoted the great fraud by creating millions of foreign situs trusts merely named after living Americans and using these deceptively named apparitions to lay false claims against our property both public and private. By 1944, the guilty parties were busily using the bankrupted pass through corporation calling itself the United States of America Inc. to siphon off the wealth of America and place false claims against the assets of the American people, the same innocent allies and friends in perpetuity that they were all obligated under trust indentures, international treaties, and commercial contracts to serve. 40. Now all the higher contracting powers are scurrying around trying to do the same thing again, bankrupt the United States, Inc., and assert a false claim that we are all standing good for it, so that their chosen bankruptcy trustees can come ashore and begin a new round of pillaging. It isn't going to work. We can see through all the various false claims and mechanisms, the fraudulent bankruptcies, the creation of new public transmitting utilities named after us in more dog Latin, the generation skipping trusts designed to deny us any benefit in our own lifetimes and to steal our grandfather's estates as abandoned property. We know it all, see it all, and we are not amused, Francis. We are laughing at General Dunford and the Noi Republique. We already chose new international representatives from among the federal corporations and the Neue Republik isn't in the running. The United Nations Security Council, the Queen, and your office have been fully informed and so has Jacob Rothschild. We will not be playing that game anymore. The Bank of International Settlements has been directed to settle the American accounts, discharge any national debt and get on with making settlement for all that we are owed, and no, we won't be requiring any loans of our own assets back to us at interest anymore. 41. By 1908, the then Roman pontiff and the British monarch tightened their grip and prepared for more fun and games, pillaging and stealing from Americans they were under trust indenture, commercial contract and every requirement of decency and honor to protect. They set up the FBI, and then the private European-controlled central bank known as the Federal Reserve System in 1913, and right after that, the private Internal Revenue Service, the updated version of the Inquisition, which just like the confessions and payments of tithes required by the Fourth Lateran Council of 1215 are supposedly voluntary and collected on April 15. Every bit of it, including this connection of the Inquisition with the Internal Revenue Service is known. 
42. The income tax which was the object of the Internal Revenue Service's mission began as Peter's Pence, a crusade tax which the kings of France and Britain first levied on their subjects in 1166 and 1188 and which was used to finance World War I, World War II, and the endless conflicts before, after, and in between. In America during World War II this was touted as a victory tax that was supposed to automatically sunset when the armed conflict ended, but lacking any specific ending date, the Internal Revenue Service just kept on strong-arming and extorting and collecting and filing bogus charges against the hapless Americans year after year. Hundreds of thousands of Americans then as now are rotting in federal jails for the crime of not paying taxes they never owed. For this crime alone, the Vatican Treasury deserves to be liquidated. 43. Apparently anything including flatulent cows are to be taxed and used to justify the imposition of new taxes on the poor and the working people of this and every other nation. The Holy See and the British monarch just don't seem to know when to leave well enough alone or how to pay their own bills for all the destruction their policies have caused the environment and the all the misery and death they have inflicted on innocent people. Neither does the United States Congress, the board of directors of the French IMF-sponsored shell corporations that have been here on our soil pretending to be our government since 1944. We are sick of it, Francis, full up to the gills, and you had better believe that we do know and can prove every nasty little bit of this sick and vermin-infested history. 44. Bear in mind, as you must, that all of this mechanism designed for fraud and racketeering and war profiteering was and is owned by the Roman Pontiff, the private Federal Reserve owned and operated by the Pope, wrote the amendment to the Trading with the Enemy Act in 1917 to include the trusting American people among the enemies and mandated that they be licensed to conduct trade. One of their most basic natural rights was licensed as a criminal activity subject to government regulation by the foreign private Federal Reserve banks. This was done to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy, to save the bacon of England and France and Rome in World War I, and then just left on the books and never corrected. It's going to get corrected now, Francis, one way or another. 45. The American people were lied to and told that their government required them to obtain a social security number and a pension account and that they needed to establish this in order to have a job in their own country and to fund old age pensions in their declining years. This forced application under conditions of deceit and misinformation in fact set up a bank account in the Federal Reserve System under their name written in «Dog Latin» for the Roman Pontiff and the British Monarch to plunder at will, and reduced the hard-working American people, your allies, friends, supporters, and by the millions, your parishioners, to the status of slaves and at least on paper rendered all their possessions as chattel subject to the will of the Pope and the British Monarch. Nice of you guys. This very neatly shows up what the Vatican and the British Crown and the French government have done while pretending to be our friends and allies and acting in the role of our international trustees and service providers. 46. In 1921 the phony corporate Congress abdicated its duty to control the money and turned it over to the Holy See's Federal Reserve System to be the fiscal agent of the United States Treasury, which promptly ceased to exist in 1924, taking vast amounts of American wealth with it. That didn't stop the Holy See and the Crown agents from pretending that the United States Treasury still existed. They just renamed their own shill companies after it, in a dizzying array of permutations, the United States Treasury, the Treasury of the United States, the United States Treasury Department, the U.S. Treasury, the Department of the Treasury, take your pick, Francis. After that, you can kindly deduce that we are not playing this game anymore. 47. There is one actual American corporation still standing and it is called the United States of America. The word United is just a descriptive adjective. The word United is not part of our trade name and never was. The states of America are sovereign states, not incorporated states of states. Our states are the ones that do all the incorporating, not the incorporated franchises thereof. Everyone, worldwide, really needs to get this straight, America equals States of America. United States equals our hired help. United States of America equals their hired help. 48. Every act passed by this phony corporate Congress since 1868 applies only to the federal corporation and its actual employees. 
Each and every act, as in play performance, passed by these jokers has to be approved by you or your delegated minions, the so-called Lord High Chancellors in Equity, otherwise known as the Cardinal Bishops parading around in every archdiocese. It is all made explicit in Elements of Ecclesiastical Law published in 1894. Every statute authorized by these criminals is canon law, and your direct responsibility. This includes the income tax and the legalization of abortion and gay marriage and the so-called Affordable Health Care Act, Patriot Act, and so much more. We suggest that you make good use of your red ink pen, but that is not really our business, is it? We've agreed to let you conduct your business and you've agreed to let us conduct ours, and so that's the way it is, or at least should be, if we can just address this continuing matter of mischaracterizing Americans as U.S. citizens and your states of states trying to glom onto property and assets that in fact belong to our states and to us. 49. All the men and women parading around here in black robes pretending to be American judges are nothing whatsoever but private bill collectors of the Vatican and British Crown and French Central Bank, which is busily trying to palm its debts off onto us and enforce them as our debts by fronting the Neue Republik, and some of them are priests of Cybele, otherwise known as Ashtoreth, the mother of harlots and the great abomination. These pagan priests have had a special relationship with the Roman pontiff since the 2nd century BC and they are still here, promoting every kind of evil, fraud and deceit. They've run their course here, Francis. Tell them to vacate our courthouses, and never again seek to confuse anyone here about anything. 50. The Council of Trent is what Americans have been forced to live under and nearly all of us have been commandeered at birth, mischaracterized in violation of the Geneva Conventions as foundlings and capitulated as slaves, and according to you and Queen Bess, we are all what is called United States citizens, but it is left unstated which United States? The sick, vile, venal, depraved, constantly bankrupted, violent, and disgusting empire of lies that the pontiff and the monarchs rule over, or the United States we are owed by you and Elizabeth II? We need to get this straightened out, Francis, and right about now. Feed my sheep, he said. That doesn't translate as rape and kill them because they are stupid. It doesn't translate as dumb them down some more so that they can't even read English, much less read Latin and then use that same ignorance as your excuse to enslave and steal from them. 51. There has been a great deal of identity theft and deliberate constructive fraud based on deceptively similar names going on and not just with things like the United States Treasury Department that doesn't exist or the three different versions of Internal Revenue Service with three different commissioners at their respective heads. According to the Definitive Treaty of Peace, Paris, 1783, we are the free, sovereign, and independent people of the United States, not the inhabitants, not British subjects merely here to provide governmental services. Yet, via deceit, false registrations, and every kind of deliberate confusion including the use of dog Latin, we have been misidentified as British subjects, mere residents of our own country, taxed as foreigners, mischaracterized as corporations, robbed, murdered, jailed, and treated as anything and everything but what we are. You and Elizabeth II and the Rothschild bankers are responsible for this, even though it got started a long time ago, it has come down to you, it is up to you to do the decent things required by the law of Yeshua to end it and to admit that both the law of Noah and the law of Moses are at an end, rendered obsolete and meaningless by the law of love. We are not obligated to obey the 80 million statutes standing on the books of the truly evil empire, and we are here to tell you that we are not. 52. It was 2008 when we brought this situation to the attention of Benedict XVI and he promised to end it. Eight long years have passed. When I contacted the Archbishop here and asked for his help in observing and ending the foreclosure fraud in his role as Lord High Chancellor in Equity, not a word was heard. Not a peep. Not a centime was dropped in our collection plate. After three certified letters in the name of and under the orders of Pope Benedict, no change was made. No effort was made to stop the probate fraud. Nothing was done to recognize and expedite the reconveyance of property back to the Americans it belongs to. If anything, the rush to grab up more property and harm more Americans was accelerated. The man that Benedict entrusted with the seal of St. Peter was arrested and railroaded on bogus charges and is sitting in a federal prison, and here you are, Francis, allowing all this to go on? These persons work for you. They act at your command. They are dependent on your payroll. 
reconvey all the property back to the Americans to whom it belongs as of 2008 when our claim was made. There may be reasons but there are never excuses for letting this go on another day. 53. We have waited while those directly involved in the administration of this giant manure pile have entertained us with false flags and threats and tried to issue mandates disarming us and have assembled commercial mercenary armies on our soil, operating under color of law as the new FBI, DOJ, BLM, DHS, FEMA, BATF, etc., bankrupted more versions of United States and United States of America, and continued to prosecute false claims against us and our property assets via private corporate tribunals tribunals that don't have any valid jurisdiction related to us. Look at the situation with Lavoie Finicum, an American rancher murdered by the FBI at the behest of the BLM which was engaged in a shady deal trying to sell the Russians our uranium. Read our lips, Francis. This isn't going to fly. Everyone on Earth can and will recognize at last what the United States is and that it is not America, and then, inevitably, the Americans will rise up on one side and the rest of the world will rise up on the other, and anyone left promoting this criminality will be alone and in the middle, hated by both sides. Ever heard the saying, between a rock and a hard place? That's where the Church of Rome and the inner city of London and Jacob Rothschild and all the other party hearties who have promoted and condoned this outrageous fraud are sitting. Therefore, make haste and agree with your brother. Return the purloined property interests owed to the Americans and their lawful government. We remind you that fraud vitiates everything, even the most solemn contracts, and that this entire circumstance was created by the most venal kind of fraud and sophistry, identity theft. 54. You must admit that the United States doesn't have the beginning of a just claim to one cubic centimeter of the Oregon state owed to the people of this nation, and that the United States and its hired agencies are actually under contract to serve us. Admit that Lavoie Finicum was murdered and those with him placed under false arrest by people whose equipment and paychecks were paid for with his labor. Order the release of all Americans being held in federal prisons. We are fed up to overflowing with empty promises of meaningful action to correct Vatican operations on our soil. We are sick of your Lord High Chancellor's inequity stealing everything but the bathroom faucets from us and then sanctimoniously reminding us about the needs of the poor, while they are themselves refusing to make correction, participating in the eviction of the poor from their homes and ensuring continued widespread unemployment. 55. The criminal abuse and mismanagement of the United States and the deception and horrible abuse of the innocent American people and their states on the land for 150 years has led to America being hated and feared around the world through no fault of its own. We have been deceived, used, misled, betrayed by men, popes and monarchs, who literally owe us their lives, their security, their wealth, their positions of honor, and instead of saying, thank you, several of those perpetrators responsible have indulged in plots to kill their creditors. For this, they deserve universal condemnation. In the pontiff system of things, it is your right and responsibility to liquidate corporations that have operated as crime syndicates. We can imagine no greater crime than to defraud people so as to amass odious debts against them and their estates, and then use that same debt as an excuse to attack those who are in fact the priority creditors. 56. The only states the Vatican owns are states of mind, legal fictions created from lies, formed from empty air by the father of all lies. The living people are owed the actual land and the sea and the air. Not one iota of it belongs to anything. We are here to remind you that the true Lord created man and that we are people, not persons. Our grandfather's estates are now ours. There can be no claim of abandonment. Our states, actual geographically defined states on the land, are owed freedom and the security of their borders and support for their lawful governments and generosity toward their people. All these inequities must be balanced, all these injustices righted. 57. So, Francis, let our people go. Let the Americans go in peace and return to their own rightful political status and restore their own lawful government. Meddle with us no more and forbid the British and the French and other subject nations from interfering. Expedite the exodus. Release every bit of American soil and every asset of our country which has been held under false pretenses and subjected to false claims. Thumb your nose at Satan, for his time has come. If you do what is right in the sight of the true God, and even now seek his kingdom and repent what has gone on here, your mercy will merit mercy in return. 
A great and final Passover is in preparation. In a single night those who refuse to repent and who refuse to give mercy will be removed from our sight. They will be gone as if they never were, together with all their evil works. They will be gone and they will not be remembered. So the joy of those who have suffered will be complete and there will be no cause to mourn or think of what might have been or yearn after those who are gone. Even the grief of any loss will be spared the blessed, who will not think of evil or feel fear or remember losses anymore. Thus will the will of the King of Kings be executed and against this just correction no man or nation of men can stand. He will not kill five hundred million and ruin the land for the sins of five hundred. He will not burn in anger against those who cannot understand. None of the unjust claims and contracts and lies of Satan will bear fruit. Even now they are passing, broken before you, like chaff blowing away in the wind, like shadows disappearing into light. Do not fear their passing or seek to hold on to them. The living cannot be conjoined with the dead. A copy of our decision regarding the status of the American estates is attached. There are indeed more than enough living men who are verified as the progeny owed this country to reclaim each and every nation-state. America is not abandoned and not subject to the claims of secondary creditors. Please inform the United Nations, the Bank of International Settlements, the President of the United States, the Joint Chiefs, and all the others who need to know. The Vatican and its franchises must disgorge all the titles to American property which it has been holding under false pretenses and profiting from. All our property including the copyright to our given name, our birth certificates, our baptismal records, our land deeds and records, mining claims and patents, trademarks, signatures, powers of attorney, automobiles and other private property must be re-conveyed and returned to us free and clear. No individual action or separate claim can be required to effectuate these remedies, all Americans and the American states must be made whole. The burden of proof of natural United States citizenship or voluntary status as a citizen of the United States must be assumed by the perpetrators of this fraud against us. Our nature as living men and women and our birthright political status must be honored. All American homes foreclosed upon since 2008 must be returned to their lawful owners and or all equity owed, all losses, inconveniences, costs, and damages paid up. Any collateral damages, forced sales, attorney fees, property losses or debts incurred as a result of fraud and false presumption upon Americans must also be repaid and made good. All seizures of private property, evictions, acts of extortion, and racketeering against American state nationals mistaken on purpose as United States citizens or citizens of the United States must stop. All American state nationals including all unincorporated business employers must be released from any presumed obligation to collect or pay income taxes. The consequences of incorporating any business entity must be clearly stated and fully disclosed. All military and administrative tribunals operated by the United States or any federated state of state or county of county must clearly and fairly describe their jurisdiction and exactly who or what clientele they serve. These same courts which have been used to harm must now be used to heal. All court cases, all court orders, all land deeds, titles, contracts, warranties, patents and agreements of any kind utilizing or referencing dog Latin must be held null and void, reversed, and to the extent possible, remedied. All Americans merely presumed to be United States citizens and being held in federal custody for nonviolent crimes must be immediately released. All others must have their cases promptly reviewed and prepared for release to the custody of the actual American states and counties. Assets, rents, interest owed, fees, profits, and escrows owed to the American people and the American states must be returned to them via their sovereign American states and nations bank and individual state banks. When all our property is returned and released to us free and clear and the beneficial interest we are owed is returned to us and to our states on the land, we will consider this probate of our earthly estate done and closed. Until it is, the entire Holy See is subject to our lien and our complaint is firmly lodged with the Universal Court and in heaven unseen. Respectfully, Anna Maria and James Clinton C. O. Post Office Box 520994 Big Lake, Alaska Postal Extension 99652 of Anavon at gmail.com 907-250-5087 Page 12 of 12. 
Correct your political status summary only. See original article for downloadable linked documents. The American States Assembly .net instructions from Anna. This is the basic package everyone needs to fill out and record with the local land recording office to reclaim their birthright political status and reclaim their good names and estates. Please note, do not register anything. Only record. If your local land recording district or county land recording office won't record your paperwork, look for a county that will. Often it is only a matter of traveling a few miles or sending it through the mail. This process brings forward the trade name and finds it again, and then allows us to reclaim our reversionary trust interest in all the derivative names free and clear. The deed of reconveyance seizes upon the trade name and brings it back to the land and soil jurisdiction. The certificate of assumed name seizes upon the derivative names and returns them to control of the living man. The act of expatriation explicitly renounces territorial and municipal citizenship and returns the derivative names and accounts to the land and soil. The baby deed of land recording is to help new parents and put an end to the salvaging of American babies by these corporate vermin. Simply have a third party, grandparent, uncle, family friend, do the notarization and record the baby deed as another extension of the father's deed of reconveyance. If the father refuses to claim his trade name and estate, or is dead or disabled, the baby deed can be attached to the mother's deed of reconveyance. Please note, this deed is for any children that you have, not for you as a people. How to Notarize 1179 Public Notary or Notary Public? http colon slash slash anavonrights.com slash notary.pdf the people now serving as notaries are all commissioned by state of state franchises and so they normally function as notary publics in the international jurisdiction of the sea the jurisdiction invoked as indicated by the notary block the separate portion of the document reserved for them if it is territorial United States jurisdiction being invoked, the notary block will show that the paperwork is taking place, for example, in the state of Vermont and county of Claiborne. If it is municipal United States jurisdiction, the notary block will show state of Vermont and county of Claiborne. But if you want to invoke the land jurisdiction owed to your country, the notary block will show Vermont state and Claiborne county. And ideally, the notary will be identified as a public notary. All the paperwork that I recommend other than the birth certificate paperwork will require a public notary service, will be a recording not a registration process, will go to and through a recorder's office, and the place will be a land jurisdiction state like Wisconsin State, and a land jurisdiction county like Jackson County. 1644. Correction, notaries cannot lose their bonds http colon slash slash anavonrights.com slash lozatherbonds.pdf among the other disinformation being spread is the idea that notaries could lose their bonds if they witness our acts of expatriation. Those making such comments are in true la la land. All your life, you have been signing for a fictional entity, your person. In fact, no state of state notary has ever witnessed anything but people signing as persons, so you are not doing anything unusual or wrong or even questionable by signing our paperwork, and neither is the notary doing anything questionable by witnessing it. Here's what you've got to know. In international jurisdiction there are lawful persons and legal persons, but no living people at all. So, question 1, which one are you? Lawful person or legal person? We settle the first question, lawful person or legal person? With the act of expatriation and the deed of re-conveyance. We record the fact and create the evidence that our proper name is a lawful person standing on the land and soil of our state, so that it is no longer open to any interpretation and we are not subject to being mistaken for legal persons and attacked as such. In municipal jurisdiction there are also only commercial corporations functioning as legal persons. Again, no living people at all. Question 2, where those persons domiciled on earth and who do they belong to? We settle the second question regarding legal persons with the certificate of assumed names and the form 56, which re-flags the person as an American person, not Puerto Rican, and then form 56 makes the secretary of the treasury responsible for paying its debts. Not us. 
everyone, including the notaries, needs to realize that state of state notaries, like state of state sheriffs, don't have any public bonds associated with what is in fact a private corporate office providing a public service as a paid or unpaid contractor. Instead, the state of state corporations self-insure and have risk management departments. In reality what that means is that they carry private liability insurance like any big corporation. You can't lose bonding you don't have. How to record you can record your documents in any county, anywhere in America. Prices will vary greatly. Typically, the county recording office will charge you the largest fee for the recording cover sheet, and then it will be $1 per page after that. Some county recording offices require you to use their recording sheet, others allow you to use your own. You will want to call the recorder's office ahead of time, or visit the website to find out if you can use your own recording sheet, or if you are required to use theirs. You will want to get a copy of their form before you record your documents so that you can prepare it properly. The most inexpensive way to record your documents is to do as many as possible together. If you do the documents separately, you will pay the expensive cover sheet recording fee each time and that can add up to hundreds of dollars. If you are doing separate recordings, you want to be sure to link your documents together on the recording sheet. Some recording offices have reference document linking, or you can set up your own numbering system and record as an addendum to the original recording. Again, you will want to ask the recording office what is the most efficient way to keep the documents linked and tracked together. If you are filing all of your documents together, you will need to put them in the following order. Deed of Reconveyance Certificate of Assumed Name Act of Expatriation John Doe Act of Expatriation John M. Doe Act of Expatriation John Mark Doe Cancellation of All Prior Powers of Attorney Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act DNA Paramount Claim Marriage Paperwork Baby Deed of Land Recording Diagram of the Fraud Optional How to Autograph For Your Deed of Reconveyance You Should Autograph Your Name in Red Ink for your deed of conveyance, you should autograph in blue ink. Here is the guidance from Anna, they, the new immigrants are starting out at sea in the international jurisdiction of the sea and are conveying themselves to our land jurisdiction for the first time, therefore they use blue ink. When we reconvey back to the land jurisdiction of our state we are giving notice to the sea jurisdiction authorities that we are back home on the land where we started out, which is why we sign in red and record the paperwork. We are native to these shores, not foreigners. We came from here and we are returning home, coming back after being shanghaied. The new immigrants are foreigners coming from overseas for the first time ever. Does it make sense that a person who goes on a sea voyage and then returns home is in a different position than a person who goes on a sea voyage and lands in a foreign country? Okay, so we use red and new immigrants use blue because we are starting out from different places. We are native and they are naturalized. We come from this land and return to this land. They come from over the sea and come ashore here. End of story. For all other documents, you should autograph your name in blue ink. Be sure to include your copyright symbol after your name. Don't forget your red thumbprint seal. When editing the templates, be sure to remove the word seal from the document. The autograph should be by first middle last copyright red thumbprint should touch your autograph all rights reserved without prejudice step 1 birth certificate authentication 791 step by step what you've all been screaming for part 1 http colon slash slash anavonrights.com slash step by step 1 dot pdf step 1 sit down and look at your birth certificate and understand what it is and how it functions it has two basic functions First, it is an insurance indemnity receipt which is required under the Lieber Code, Hague Conventions. They have to give you an indemnity receipt for the property they are stealing from you, essentially an insurance policy guaranteeing that your property won't be harmed as a result of their use of it. This makes you the subregee, the insured party and priority creditor of your own estate holdings. This process of registration, as opposed to recording, creates a separate person named after your given trade name, yet owned and operated by a franchise of the municipal United States, the separate government of Washington, D.C., operated as an international city-state by the members of Congress. When you get your B.C. authenticated by the United States of America State Department you find out for sure which federal corporation is issuing the birth certificate you have been issued. 
In most cases it will be a state of state, like the state of Washington, but in some cases will be a federal department, such as the Department of Defense. Second, the birth certificate as a bond, literally. It is a bond issued against the value of the estate, or more recently, public transmitting utility assets that belong to you. A bond is an IOU. A promise to pay under stipulated conditions. You have the certificate proving that you are the actual owner of the assets being bonded, but until and unless you claim your exemption from their system of things, the benefit of the bond goes to the state of state or department that is ensuring your purloined property against loss or damage. Now notice a couple other things about your birth certificate that prove that what I am telling you is true. A. There are two prominent dates displayed on the certificate. One is your actual birthday. The other is the file date, when the person, a corporate municipal franchise, was created and replaced you as the beneficiary of your own assets. So you, the living man or woman, have a birthday, and the corporate franchise person, named after you has a birth date which is always a few days or weeks after your birthday. In effect, the birth certificate records the death of your claim to own your own estate and trade name, and the birth of the federal person's claim upon your assets. You are always the holder in due course, the party having the first claim, first in line, first in time, to the trade name and estate, but if you don't claim it, or know how to claim it, you are out of luck and disinherited. b. The birth certificate is signed by the registrar, an officer of the probate court, which proves that your estate was probated. The living American state national, for example, the Minnesotan named William Bales Jensen, was taken off the title of his natural estate and his natural nationality and political status was changed to that of William Bales Jensen, a federal municipal franchise corporation and citizen of the United States, that is, a citizen under the diversity clause of the old federal code which allows corporations to be citizens. C. The birth certificate is issued on bond paper, giving you silent notice that the assets named on the face of the document, your unlawfully converted estate assets including the copyright to your trade name, your land, your labor, everything that you could ever own, has been seized upon and bonded by the organization issuing the certificate. D. The process of false probate just described results in the unlawful conversion of your name and estate assets, makes you a U.S. citizen instead of an American state national, removes you from the jurisdiction of the land and deprives you of your constitutional protections, makes you indebted and obligated to pay the bills of foreign corporations, and otherwise plays havoc with you and your entire country. E. This is done without your knowledge or consent, without your parents' knowledge or consent, and the people doing this to you are on your payroll, supposed to be rendering you good faith service the whole while. Because you don't know that this is being done to you and that these false claims against you are being made, you have no opportunity to object to them, much less delve through it to rebut all these lies and claim your exemption and exercise your indemnity. Now a few further notes, for many years the vermin seized upon your given Christian trade name, just as you were taught to print it in first grade with a first name, middle name, and last name all written in upper and lower case like this, John Michael Doe. Their federal franchise was structured as a Sestui K. Via State Trust operated under the same name written in all capital letters, John Michael Doe. Most recently, the vermin have tried to change their stripes and instead of creating their fictional persons as Sestui K via state trusts, they have been creating public transmitting utility franchises named after you. How can you tell the difference? The estate trusts are all named with the full first, middle, and last names appearing in all capital letters, John Michael Doe. The public transmitting utilities all appear with only a middle initial, but still in all capital letters, John M. Doe. Please note that any name in any style that uses only a middle initial is not a legal name. It is meaningless and void for lack of specificity. Was that John Michael Doe or John Mark Doe or John Marvin Doe or John Maxwell Doe or, or, or? You can always call the vermin on that, because lack of specificity destroys the existence of any jurisdiction actual or fictional. A claim against such a named entity can only stand if you just assume it is your name and accept the charges without objection. This technicality is not the essence of the problem nor your strongest defense. This is just to point out that what they are doing is blatantly, obviously, on the face of it illegal, and you don't need any rocket science to prove that it is, nor any other cause to object. 
If you raise this objection and they proceed against you, they are dead meat upon appeal, a fact that may not be known to you, but which is written in stone above their heads, if you don't properly identify the parties, you have no claim. Now that you know what the birth certificate is and what its functions are, it will make more sense to you that you need to get it verified as a genuine document, and this is where the process of authentication comes in. Why authentication and why not an apostille nor a certification? Countries that are signers on the Hague Conventions use apostilles to verify genuine documents passing between themselves. Countries that are not part of the Hague Conventions use authentication for the same purpose. Certification is an in-house domestic equivalent of a guarantee and isn't strong enough for international use. The United States of America never signed the Hague Conventions. The United States did. As a result, documents issued by or pertaining to the United States of America and its international functions have to be authenticated, while documents issued by or pertaining to the United States have to apostilled. Both processes serve the same purpose of verifying the record and the paper. When you act as an American state national you are acting under the auspices of the United States of America, so when you are ready to reclaim your assets and exercise your exemptions, you use documents that are authenticated. If you were an actual federal employee or dependent and acting under the auspices of the United States, Inc. as a franchise of the municipal government or as a citizen of the territorial government, either one, you would use documents that are apostilled. All that is the reason why you go through the turkey trot of getting your records officially verified and why you need to do this correctly. I recommend getting at least two if not three copies of your birth certificate ordered from the vital statistics people. Keep one and send two to the State Secretary of State and ask for an authentication to do business in Indonesia, a non-Hague Convention country. They will add a cover sheet, signature, and seal guaranteeing that the attached BC is genuine. Next, take the state authenticated documents and send them to the United States of America Secretary of State's office in DC and request the same service, authentication of the BC for use in Indonesia. Each authentication requires a small fee. At the end of the day, you get back a three-page document, the original BC you got from Vital Statistics, the State Secretary of State's cover page and, on top of that, a yellow, heavyweight cover page from the USA Secretary of State's office. That yellow page verifies the authenticity of the State Secretary of State's guarantee and it tells you explicitly which federal entity state of state franchise or department issued the indemnity receipt and is responsible for guaranteeing your exemption from all this rot. Now, finally, you have the proof in your hand of what has been done to you, who did it, and who is liable for it. You have the lawn mower, and now all you need is the gas. Step-by-step -step instructions for authentication process 1, order your certified birth certificate through vital records online from your birth state. The general link is https colon slash slash vitalrec.com slash request several certified copies I suggest minimum of 3 but probably 5 is better. These will be printed on bond paper. 2. Once you receive the certified bond copies, you will go to the Secretary of State website for most states, however in some states, for example Hawaii, you will need to locate the correct department for authentication. You will fill out the form on the Secretary of State or Authorized Office website to request each birth certificate to be authenticated. Fill out the form and with the certified birth certificates and a check for the correct amount. At the very least, send them certified mail return receipt, but it is recommended to send them registered mail because your documents are s in possession of a postal service employee at all times. Please note, some states will only provide an apostille, for example California. You will need to request travel to a non-Hague country such as Indonesia to have the apostille correct. 3. Once you receive these authenticated and birth certificates back from your Secretary of State, you will then send them the U.S. State Department to be authenticated. Here is a link to the website, to the form, and the address to send it to. Send a check or money order for $8 for each birth certificate to be authenticated. Website information, https colon slash slash travel dot state dot gov slash content slash travel slash and slash legal slash travel dash legal dash considerations slash internal dash judicial dash ast slash authentications dash and dash apostles slash requesting dash authentication dash services dot html. 
form to fill out https colon slash slash eforms.state.gov slash forms slash ds4194.pdf Mailing address, Office of Authentications U.S. Department of State CA, PPT, S2, AUT, 44132 Mercure CIR PO Box 1206 Sterling, VA 20166 1206. What if your birth certificate name is not in all capital letters? Some states are issuing birth certificates with proper case name. In that case, you will use the name assigned on the birth certificate and follow the other steps accordingly. Hand carry option for U.S. State Department authentication This option below will have Tony Azuzi hand carry your birth certificates to Sterling, VA office for U.S. State Department authentication. Please note, they only open their office from 8 to 9 a.m. F the fee for this service is $40 which includes the State Department fee. Multiple copies are $30 each. 3 BCs equals $90. You must mail the documents in a large envelope using FedEx and must include an envelope filled out with a return address postage prepaid so all Tony has to do once he gets the document authenticated is put it in the envelope provided and mail it back. The authenticated document will have a brass ring attached. Allow up to 3 days turnaround plus mailing time. His address is Tony Azuzi 1400 K Street Northwest Suite 102, Washington DC, 20005 Phone, 202-658-1160 Step 2 Assign U.S. Secretary of the Treasury as the straw man fiduciary 560. How to correct your political status and why http colon slash slash anavonrights.com slash correct your political status dot pdf. Please note the information below is corrected and updated to apply to American state nationals. In the original article, it had instructions to create a Treasury Direct account using the registered mail number. This is for U.S. citizens only, not for American state nationals. If you accidentally requested this, simply send a notice of correction letter to Secretary Mnuchin. The template is located below. Closing parenthesis. You have been mischaracterized and defrauded and you have prima facie evidence of that readily available. You think of it as your birth certificate, but it isn't. It is a certification that a federal municipal person was created and named after you and that at one point in your life you were a real American. You were born on your birthday, but the municipal person has a birth date which is several days or weeks later, the filing date shown on the certificate. Please note that the birth certificate is printed on bond paper. It is a security instrument. Please also note that it has been signed by the registrar, an officer of the probate court. This is prima facie evidence that your earthly estate was probated when you were only a few days or weeks old and that it was seized upon by the state of blank, or state of underscore, blank, and operated for its benefit from that time on. So, step 2, ditch the federal municipal person and the responsibilities and obligations associated with it. You need to get the birth certificate certified, and then you need to endorse it and surrender it to the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury. Please note the two dots between the U and the S, the U.S. Treasury, and make Stephen T. Mnuchin the fiduciary responsible for IT. The endorsement is simple but exact. The certified birth certificate that the birth state secretary of state sends back to you will have a cover page riveted or hard stapled and firmly attached to the front of the BC. Please note, in some cases the state may use just a certified seal, for example Washington. Every state is different. You leave that cover page attached and on the front of the BC itself in the upper left hand corner and in red ink you write, accepted by DRAI and sign it by, your upper lower case signature, and date it. Then turn the BC over and on the back anywhere right, in red ink, pay to the order of the United States of America, U.S. Treasury. Without recourse. And again, write, by, your upper and lower case signature, and date it. Next comes the Form 56, which is the IRS form called, Notice of Fiduciary Relationship. This is your notice to Mr. Mnuchin that you are making him and his office responsible for the person named after you. The Form 56 is very simple, the name of the person is the name on the BC which you are returning to the Treasury. The name of the fiduciary is Stephen T. Mnuchin, Secretary of the Treasury. You can look up the address online. 
I believe it is 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, Washington, D.C. 20220. Section A, F, Other, Public Commercial Trust Administration. Section B, 4, Check A, B, and H, Other, and just say, all forms that may be necessary. On the back, Part 2, 7, C, Other, Surrender of Federal Person to U.S. Treasury. On the back, Part 3, Court and Administrative Proceedings, enter the name and address of the agency issuing the BC. The date proceeding initiated will be the file date which is never your birthday, but a few days or weeks later. The docket number will be the state file number on the BC. The time will be the time you were actually born, and the place of other proceedings will be USA. On the back, Part 4, Signature, you write the word by, like a by line to a newspaper story, by, your name, upper and lower case, authorized representative, and the date. Underneath the signature is a blank space. It is appropriate to say that you wish to be indemnified against claims or losses under the Sovereign USA Private Registered Indemnity Bond AMRI 00001RA3934276400 US. This is basically a bond posted in behalf of all the actual states of the Union and all the people living in those states ensuring them against any further claims related to the municipal person s they have surrendered back to Mr. Mnuchin. And that is that. You have now surrendered the municipal citizen back whence it came and you have insured yourself against any further claims or losses or charges brought against that person. Along with the Form 56 you should include a brief letter stating that it is your instruction to operate exclusively under 100% commercial liability and without benefit of any limited liability or other benefit of the Public Charitable Trust PCT. You are going to send this package of documents via registered mail to the Treasury. Each red and white registered mail label, available with instructions at all post offices, is unique and has an alphanumeric identifier to track it. Also ask him to settle all debts and charges related to your name. Thank him for his time and attention. Well, that was a royal pain and you shouldn't have ever been entrapped and obligated by your employees in the first place, but now you have taken action to sever the presumption that you are volunteering to act as a federal municipal citizen, and nobody can say otherwise. From now on, it is Mr. Mnuchin's problem and you are indemnified against any further claims or complaints related to it.